um, change, make technical amendments and yes, stop. Yes. Uh, just yes. a little bit. Let's first start with the meeting. We are not yet started with the meeting. Okay. We are still dealing with housekeeping issues. They will come back to you on those issues. I'm sorry, Chair. I'm just so excited that we can present this to you today. <laughs> That's why I, 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 I can see. I can see that you are full of energy. Uh, <laughs> no, we're coming to you just now, a minute from now. Honorable Hall. Yes, thank you, Chair. Good morning to everyone. I just wanted to indicate that. Ms. Breitenbach asked me to apologize on her behalf, but now I do see that she is on the platform. So I don't know as the honor whether she and the Honorable Janky is on the beach there, like yes. yesterday. Uh, but uh, muted. Uh, maybe she can just indicate whether she will yes. then be able to be on the platform for the duration of the meeting or not. I don't know. Yes, I, I can see that there might be challenges in the DA in terms of communication. Uh, Honorable Breitenbach has already indicated that she's going to leave early. Maybe it's a DA matter, the communication issues. Yeah, I thought cheap politicking was beyond you. Um, <laughs> noted. I was expecting a very strong response. I was expecting that. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> The yeah. DA is just very thorough. I was afraid that if I had to leave before the meeting started, then Honorable Owen would have apologized for me. So we're both polite and thorough. Thank you. Something everybody else could have to look at. <laughs> uh, um, any other apologies, members? Nan, uh, can we start? Uh, now, Ms. Botha. Uh, over to you. Oh, there was a hand from the committee secretariat. Uh, do you want to say something, Ms. Tantanjin? No, Chair, no, Chair. No apologies. Thanks. Okay. Uh, can you fly to the slides, Ms. Uh, Bota? Um, unfortunately, Chair, because of our connectivity problems, we, we are using alternative devices. It is difficult for us to share it. I have asked my other colleague whether she can share it. Um, um, uh, but yeah, unfortunately, I didn't know we have to share it. But this morning, um, we were told to, or requested to share it. So we tried, but we were not successful because of the fact, like I said, we're working with another device because our laptop connectivity is not, it's not right. So um, I'll try to go very slow so that, that the committee can fully understand and be with me um, whilst I'm going through the, 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 the presentation. I'm really, oh, there it is. Can, uh, no, 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 I no, no, need to be a share. Um, share. But um, just for okay. you. Just for information, uh, it's important that uh, uh, we must always bear in mind that uh, sharing of uh, slides is not only for the benefit of committee members. There are people who are watching these proceedings via YouTube and other means. So it's important that uh, we should ensure that they do see what we are being presented with. Uh, no, I, I apologize for that. We have, we have, I know where to share, but it seems that the um, transmission of the presentation from the one device to the other device is problematic. Um, and so, but I really would like to ask your patience with us and allow us to proceed because this, these regulations are very important. Yeah, somebody was, has already started sharing. Can we, can you share? Yeah. Chair, yeah. we can assist from our side. I can assist Ms. Ina both. I'll share from our side. She can just indicate next slide as we can. I'll yes. assist. 
Thank you very, very much. I, I suppose it's, it's, uh, I think we got more cocktail jacket. I suppose, Chair, that you, all of you can see the slides now. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I, I think on the first page, as I already um, was uh, in the process of telling you, is that just to refresh your memory about the Child Justice Act um, of 2008, which was established to really take, only take care of children who are in conflict with, with the law. And then the act was amended in 2019, and it was signed into law by the president uh, on the 26th of May. Next slide, please. This is, this is just as background check. Sorry, can you still hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Proceed. Yeah. Um, yes, I can't see. The, uh, 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 it seems that there's... Oh, there, there's the second one. Thank you very much. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just looking for my glasses. <laughs> okay. Then on the second slide, you will see that there we include what the amendments um, were that were affected in the last amendment act of the child justice act and you may recall that it, the most important i think aspect was the whole issue of criminal capacity because that you have been um, uh, 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 um, you have been given a presentation on the report and why we, we are going to change it from 10 to 12 and say, so, oh yeah, the president has decided that we're going to do that. We're doing that for different reasons. So what I can just say is because of the fact that the act now say the criminal capacity is no longer 10 years, but 12 years. We had to change everything in the regulations that refer to the 10 years, to the 12 years. And just for those who may wonder what the, 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 this aspect is more about, this is to say that children at this point in time, because the Amendment Act is not in operation yet, that a child under the age of 10 years cannot be prosecuted. Now, the, if we put the act into operation, which we only can do once Parliament has um, approved the regulations, it will mean that only children under the age of 12 years and not 10 years anymore will be, um, will be prosecuted. And then secondly, then you want to know, but what about the children between 12 years and 14 years? The, you can prosecute them, but there is a presumption that they don't have um, criminal capacity, but the state can by means of um, by means of evidence rebut that. Then, as I said to you, there are a few technical amendments that, that were done to uh, bring it in line with um, certain definitions um, that is in the, in the act already. And then also is that um, what we did is that because of the problems to get people to do the criminal capacity assessments, um, we, we also they indicated or decided that what we're going to do is we're not going to require any more that a, a, an assessment of the criminal capacity must be done at the preliminary inquiry. But only when a decision has been made that the child must go to the child justice court and be prosecuted. So therefore, you will see in the regulations, there's a lot of places where we then change the reference to assessments in relation to a preliminary inquiry. The next but important thing is that um, 
when the prosecutor must decide whether or not to prosecute the child. And then in previously in the in the exi this existing act, the prosecutors had also to make an assessment or give their views about the cognitive ability of children. Now, um, according to the, the research that was done and that was presented to, to the uh, parliament, parliament decided that no, they're going to take that out, um, that the, the, the co cognitive ability obligations on, on prosecutors. So you will also see the regulations that an amendment has been done in that regard. Then also is that, um, as I said already, um, we will not de be dealing with criminal capacity assessments in preliminary in uh, investigations, or, um, but only when the child is in the child justice court. So, and in that sense is also that um, uh, the, the, there's that divide diversion pur purposes or diversion options that I will speak to later. And then what is very important is that in terms of the existing act is the, um, the, the magistrate can decide to dispense with a pre-sentence report um, when it imposes a, a, a sentence involves, involving compulsory residence in a child and youth care center. So what we've done now is we say we can, the court can, under certain circumstances, not dispense with a pre-sentence um, report. So next slide, please. Okay, we've just uh, indicated there what is the power of the minister, where is his authority to make regulations, and who he must consult it. That is what you can see there. And the next bullet, what is important is that then uh, because of the changes abroad uh, to the Act, which is not in operation, as I said, we need to change the, the regulations as well. So you can, I can go to the next slide. Okay, the first um, clause is the definition clause. But this clause only refers to the principal set of regulations that were published in March 2010 and also the amendment during December 2017. Um, clause 2, there you will see, we only replace in the, the, the expression 10 years for the expression 12 years. Remember, because we have now increased the criminal capacity age from 10 to 12. So that is why we, am, we replace it. And then also you will see in 2B of the regulations that there is a replacement of the expression appropriate adult that is in the present act with, with the word appropriate person, which is also now in the amendment act. And the reason why this is, it's actually a technical amendment, because if you looked at the definition of appropriate adult, it includes a person uh, over 16 years. And that person is in terms of the law now not regarded as an adult. So that's why we refer to as appropriate person. And just to give you more information, this is especially important because children are not supposed to be kept in prisons or in police cells so that you must always try and release them so you can release them now in terms of of this amendment read with the act that they can be released into the, the care of an appropriate persons which means the where we have child headed households but this is nothing new it's just that there was a mistake made and we are rectifying that mistake um, if you go to the next slide Uh, because of the fact that we are amending the regulations, we also had to go to the forms and amend the forms, and we will get to that later. But also the forms are mainly 
aligned with the the wording of the the amendment act and you will see it there except for one uh, ex uh, exception which i will explain to you and um so where you will see here an order of the child justice court this uh, must uh, for an evaluation of criminal capacity if the court ordered that then he must do so in, on a form that substantially corresponds with form two of the annexure so and remember it's only a child justice court that can deal with criminal capacity the next sub two that is where we just want to draw your attention to is the rest of the regulations stay the same but what what we only changed here at the request of some of our commentators and our stakeholders is that um it's very important that you send the charge sheet to the person who's going to do the um, competency criminal capacity um, assessment because otherwise this person doesn't have any um any kind of information other than this child is this age this and so forth so it will help the person who's doing the um the 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 assessment i just can say is that they were requests that we include the police docket but afterwards we've discussed that we all came to the same conclusion that that is not that is not possible so um if we can go just to the next slide please um here you will see we are changing um the the one of the sections by adding a sub clause and the sub clause that we are adding is that there's an obligation to the dgl that he or she must annually compile and keep a list of private psychiatrists and clinical counseling and educational psychologists who must then do the assessments the criminal capacity assessments that we have spoken about and that list must be provided to us so that we uh, for distribution to the registrars of the high court and all the clerks of the magistrates court so they know exactly who is available to um to do this kind of 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 assessment that that is something that i think is very important because in any event the department of health is keeping a list of psychiatrists and psychologists who must who have, must assist with um the investigations um in terms of section 77 and 78 of the um criminal procedure act we deal which deals with mental capacity next slide please okay and here we come to the forms um a chair person first uh, form 1 is amended to make it more user friendly we just changed the format a little bit and then we provide now for the age of 12 years instead of 10 years also to align it with the amendment act then form 2 is amended to remove the reference to the inquiry magistrate in line with the amendments to regulation 13 you remember we also said that um that the inquiry magistrate don't have to do a, a criminal capacity assessment that is the, the the one thing and the other thing is in so far as the inquiries are concerned you will see in the regulations that social workers are not any more required to <clears throat> sorry to do a uh, Uh, to give their views on the criminal capacity of the child because the child is is the the the, the social worker that is not a competent person to do that so that is form 2 a very very small um uh, amendment to align it with the act then form 2 is also amended in order to ensure that the charge sheet 
and the probation officer's report are submitted to the person who is to conduct the criminal capacity of child, the child in line with the amendment to regulation. I've already referred to the fact that um, of in the preliminary, there is a preliminary inquiry and the preliminary inquiry at that stage, the probation officer must, uh, must give in a report. So here we are only in line with the Act say all these two documents must go to the person um, who must conduct the criminal capacity of the child. Next slide, please. Um, you will see the, um, the next slide is about consultation and Chair, I think if you look at it, you can see that we did cons uh, extensive consultation with the role players uh, when we drafted the regulations. Um, we, we drafted it and we gave it to them for comments and then what we did is because of the fact that also, there is, in terms of the Act, a, a committee that is chaired by our DG that we must um, then uh, uh, ensure that we present it to them. But because uh, they were not sitting and we are in a hurry to have these regulations in place so that the Act can be put into operation, we send it to each member. Of the of that committee, and everybody was 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 happy with the regulations. But we also consulted, as required by Section 97 of the Act. But, uh, our minister wrote letters to cabinet members responsible for these um, these uh, 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 components, and uh, we we didn't uh, get any objection against the uh, uh, regulations as amended. Next slide, please. Uh, there you can see the department, what the comments is that we have received. That, uh, and I don't know whether you want to take it me through, uh, let, uh, let me take you through this because of the fact that all of what is here, I've already um, indicated to you, except that maybe I could say is that um, the, the, uh, the, the, the psychiatrist and psychologist allowances are, pre are also determined by our minister. So that is in essence what that slide um, refers to but I have dealt with most of the things already. So we can go to the next slide, please. You will see there also it's about the comments received, uh, continue in agreement, in agreement, no comments, in agreement. Um, so next slide, please. Also SAPS is in agreement, legal aid, teddy bear clinic, and then Cape Wylands, Overberg region. Um, also there, we've got agreement. Next slide, please. Um, and as I see, and then the reason why we are before you this morning is because Section 97.2 of the Act provides that the regulations must be tabled in Parliament for approval. Uh, and this is the reason why we've asked you to give us a slot in your very busy program to, to um, do this presentation. And I think that is the last presentation, the last, uh, the second last one, because the last one is only, uh, uh, the Amendment Act will come into operation on a date to be determined by the President in the Gazette. I've already spoken about that, that we can't um, advise the President to put it into operation until the draft regulations have been approved by Parliament. And um, yeah, that, that is what's actually on that slide. And then the next slide, if I'm not mistaken, that is the thank you slide. And I, I just want to say thank you very much for the opportunity to um, have this um, sp place, space in your busy program to present it. Thank you very much. I don't know, um, Chairperson, Dr. Charmaine Bardenhorst, 
she was involved with the drafting of the act and all the amendments. I don't know whether there's something that she would like to add, but uh, also is that maybe she can um, respond to some of the questions that she's got the background which we were, were drafting the regulations didn't have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to prioritize Honorable Swart before, she, before he leaves for the Chief Whip's Forum, if he's got anything to raise. I think he has already left. Uh, thank you, Chair. I am still here. I just want to commend the department on the regulations. I really appreciate them with the hard work that they've done to bring the regulations into line with the uh, amendment. And uh, I, I appreciate that's all I want to the extent is my gratitude to the department. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Swart. Uh, other members? Any other comments, Honorable Horn? Yes, thank you, Chair. Yes, I'm, I'm with the, uh, the Honorable Swart. I think the presentation makes it quite clear that the, what the purpose of the proposed amendments to the regulations were, and I think it, it enables us as, as the committee representing Parliament to ultimately take a proposal to Parliament. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other member? Uh, Honorable Jale. Oh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I just want a uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, and the, and the members, and also the present the presenters, uh, the department with the team. No, Chair, I think I would want to echo the words of my colleagues. We appreciate the the presentation, and we note it. Uh, but whenever they were uh, 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 presenting, something came into my mind to say. If I don't know if they are relevant, the question will be relevant to ask from them, or was this supposed to be asked from our DCS? Uh, it is just for your interest, Chair. The issue of uh, because they are now rectifying the mistake that we have done of ten years. Do we have maybe, or do they have a knowledge of those currently who are? Uh, of this age, who are maybe um, on the wrong side of the law, uh, that needs maybe some pardon. What are they going to do? Maybe are they going to pardon them or what? And all that debt. Is it going to be uh, the, the that dent of them being uh, on the wrong side of the law? Is it going to be removed or to get? I'm not sure if maybe the question will is relevant to them who. Uh, to, for, for, for them to answer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ms. Botha and members of your team. Um, thank you very much, um, Chairperson. Um, unfortunately, we do not have any statistics uh, uh, in, the, the, in the section um, legislative development. But I don't know whether Ms. Dr. Shamain Bardenos has can give you an answer to that or information. And then also is about the question is what's going to happen with them, uh, with the ones that are in in um, uh, are prosecuted. I th I, my take is that remember they can't be kept in police cells or in 
um, in the present un unless there are very exceptional circumstances. So I think what's going to happen is all the cases will be withdrawn against the, 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 the children that are prosecuted and that all the, the, the prosecution will be stopped um, on the basis of this new law. And um, yeah, and then only children over 12 will then be further prosecuted. I don't know whether Shamaina has something to add. Thanks, Chi. Thank you very much, Dr. Biden. Uh, good morning, honorable chair and honorable members. Um, if I understand the question correctly, um, uh, uh, we, um, the honourable member was, um, Jelly was referring to, to children that uh, are being prosecuted who are 10 and 11. And, um, well, from, um, <clears throat> from my point of view, um, this is what the law currently states. So as soon as the new amendment will come into effect, those children will no longer be arrested and, and prosecuted, but those who were prosecuted before the amendment came into to, um, into operation uh, were prosecuted as uh, the law um, were at um, you know at that time. So I'm I'm not sure if I understood the question um, correctly, um, but but um, that is what I can add at this stage. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Biden Ost, Honorable Chele. Are you satisfied with the responses? Yes, I think I'm satisfied. Uh... We will we'll just monitor and see that maybe we'll get information in terms of what is what is going to happen to current that those who are currently involved in who are going to be rescued by this uh, passing of this uh, a bill. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Uh, also, on behalf of the committee, let me take this opportunity to thank you very much for your hard work and for uh, presenting these regulations. It's important that uh, uh, the, the bill itself must be implemented as soon as possible. So we really do appreciate your dedication in ensuring that these regulations are presented before us as soon as possible. Uh, thank you very much. So what we will do um, as early as uh, next week, a report will be presented before the house before us for adoption which will go to the house for approval is that in order members yes chair yes thank you very much uh, on Chief, the, thank thank you. oh oh it was just a oh, thank you honorable language uh, Ms. Bother? Um, just to say thank you very much again, and you've made our day because we, we really are worried about the children that should not be, be prosecuted. So thank you very, very much for assisting us and for, for from your side, approving the regulations. Thank you. You have also made our day uh, seeing uh, uh, public servants as passionate as you, uh, as you have shown. Uh, it also makes us to be very proud that uh, our country is in, is in safe hands. So continue with that passion. You and members of your team, uh, also very happy that uh, you have brought these uh, regulations um, and there was no need to to change anything so we'll just be taking them to the house thank you very much uh, members there is something that uh, i forgot to update you on yesterday um, there was a, a request that was made by Honorable Horn um, um, with respect to the issue of the Regional Commissioner of KwaZulu Natal Correctional Services. Um, I think we have all, we, we have all received 
uh, either uh, WhatsApp or SMSs or call, phone calls from uh, Ms. Tengele, the Regional Commissioner of KZN. So what we have done, we have written both to Mr. Ngele as the, com as the committee and to the department to provide us with all the relevant documentation pertaining to this issue. Because we, you have an issue that is within the department, in courts, uh, in uh, before arbitration or some of it has been arbitrated already it's now coming to parliament so we would like to get all the documentation from both sides so that during this period of recess and uh, also the legal team of parliament can look at those document uh, those documents so that when we come back we can be able to deliberate um, uh, having both the uh, documents from both parties, and then we can see how we take the matter forward. Is that in order, members? Uh, yes, chair, thank you very much. Chair. Uh, Honorable Chair of the Subcommittee. No, no, no. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, I just want to, to, to support uh, uh, the issues and, and, and the process that you are directing, I think uh, it's, 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 it's proper. We must deal with this issue in a comprehensive manner, uh, given the gravity of it and the fact that we are an oversight body. So uh, let's 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 thank Com I mean uh, Honorable Horn for raising it, but I want to support for the process that you are putting on the table so that. It gives us enough time to go through this and as well as the legal team to advise properly. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Janji. Uh, so, uh, members, uh, before we, uh, we adjourn, there's also one issue uh, that is in terms of the program. Um, we agreed that we need um, time before we adjourn where we will deal with decisions of of the committee decisions that we took since the the quarter that we had in Stellenbosch uh, and all other decisions that we take that, that, that we have taken and to so that we are able to plan properly for for the next term and for the rest of the year and the rest of the term like uh, the, the term uh, starting 2019 to 2024. Um, so it would be important that from time to time we do a review of, uh, of, uh, of the implementation of the decisions we have taken to check whether we are still on course and to check which ones have been implemented and which ones have not yet been implemented so that uh, we, we are able to to monitor properly our work uh, as the committee and improve where we are supposed to improve. Um, but the challenge that we have, which might necessitate that maybe that meeting might be uh, in the afternoon or yes, because we have, um, we have public hearings on the hate crime, hate speech bill uh, which is going to take three days. Uh, the reason for that, uh, we have received quite a number of uh, submissions. Uh, the last time I checked, I think the committee secretariat can correct me. It's about 55 people that want to make uh, submissions to, to the committee. So we, 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 said we have uh, scheduled uh, that those uh, hearings take place over three days. But we are proposing that immediately after the last presenter, uh, when we close the public hearings on the hate crime, hate speech, because it will be the last day. Um, after that, I think the first will be on a Friday, that that Friday we work until late. And because after that, uh, myself and Honorable Breitenbach we will be starting again with the Judicial Services Commission's work uh, from the 4th until the 8th. 
So it, it is always advisable that uh, you start a new term with a plan uh, that uh, we try and push that Friday, even if we end, uh, uh, we, we finish very late, but it's important that we should do this work and the secretariat should be in the research unit should try and develop a comprehensive document that would be presented uh, before the committee. Um, are there any reflections on that? Is that in order, members? In order, Honorable Mola, your hand was up. Or we or your voice? No, I'm saying, Chair, it's, it's in order. What we have proposed is assisting the work of the committee, uh, starting from uh, gauging the work that we have done already, what progress have we made, and uh, and uh, and uh, until such time, uh, the, 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 we 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 the, the parliament rises. We must have at least known what do we what is. Is it that we're going to prioritize as we come back? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Mola. Is there any view, contrary view? Uh, none. Thank you very much, uh, members. I think we have come to the end of our meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. And those who are watching and those who are part of a virtual platform, thank you for 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 gracing this meeting. Uh, Ms. Nontlantla from the Law Society of South Africa, we have not yet forgotten you. We are still going to organize a meeting between ourselves and the Law Society of South Africa and the General Council of the Bar. You are always on our minds. We are still, we are, we are still coming back to you. Thank you very much, members. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. And thank you very much, Honorable Jale, for the corrections. Uh, you assisted us today. Thank you very much. Amanda. Thank you. <laughs> oh, way too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good, very good. <laughs> Thank <clears throat> you.